Honestly, with me is someone that we know and we love, um, and hopefully we'll be hearing a lot more from. Amy Lilly, hello, finally, welcome to my Zoom. Oh, I'm so excited to be on it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really stoked to speak to you. I really, really love everything that you've sent me. Um, but first things first, talk to me a little bit about who is Amy Lilly um, and how how did the human being create the artist of Amy Lilly? Like, what, what's your story? Wow, I don't know. It's a big question. That's <laughs> uh, a big question. Um, whew. I don't know. I think I always wanted to um, make people feel better and love themselves more. And I think that's why I make music, just to, like, if people can listen to it and feel empowered or feel like they're letting something go, then I've done my job. I've always wanted to do that. So, And um, I just luckily fell into music and that's how I communicate it. So I think that's my story. That's me as a person. Yeah. <laughs> Amy, did you ever have moments where you struggled to love yourself? Because I feel like when we are, are led down a path, it's generally because we had to like overcome some of that for ourselves um, in order to be that for someone else. Did you struggle with that? Yeah, I mean, I struggle with it all the time. I think everyone does struggle with loving themselves because like you have your good days and your bad days but trying to like even it out to make sure that Hmm. all the negative voices in your head you got to keep them at bay I think definitely I struggle with it do you think that um and I, I I've asked a few artists this before do you think that the ability to journal because in a sense like songwriting writing lyrics is journaling do you think that that ability maybe helps you overcome some of these things yeah for sure I think if you have like thoughts swelling around your head it's so good to like get them down and make sense of them and make them into something like if you're an artist you'd make them into a song yeah um but or if you're a person you just need to get them down so you can see where they are and understand them and get them out of your brain I think it's so important to journal or to write something down so during the the pandemic the lockdown we were talking about journaling a lot because a lot of the artists that I was talking to uh, was talking to at that stage were talking about journaling and how important it is exactly like you said to get it down and then I'd speak to a lot of normal people like me that aren't like lyricists that in any way shape or form not poet not poetic at all and you know we open these books and we buy these beautiful notepads from like typo and we go and drop dollar and get a new pen and everything and then we're like <laughs> okay cool we're gonna journal and then you open it and you're like what do i even where do you even begin you know because i think yeah. you're so adept at putting feelings and making them sound beautiful the rest of us kind of just like right well i ate bacon for breakfast today and my dog <laughs> pooed on the carpet and i had a fight with my husband how how what <laughs> How, I know there is no wrong and right to journaling, but how would you start journaling? Um, so for me, I think I start off with like a word that I have in my brain. Like, um, so like almost like a title of a paper that you write or like a title of a chapter. So I'll write like, um, even if it's a, what could it be like for today? Like today um, has been, rainy and thunder so I'll write like thunder down and I'll write all my thoughts about thunder and how it makes me feel okay and then I go from there and then I just start writing everything I feel from like what does thunder make me feel who am I like everything and I'll just write like one word and then it'll come into something it doesn't come into anything sometimes but I just start off with the title <laughs> yeah that's me Okay, well, I think you you've um you've just you've just made the market more competitive for yourself because we're all <laughs> going to be writing cupcake. I'm joking, and like what we're thinking about, or like you know, like you you you're training the next Amy Lily. Ah, oh, I hope so. <laughs> you know, this is this is something that I also wanted to talk about because when I was researching you, so many places have called you authentic and attainable, and I think ten years back. I don't think either of those words would have been good words to hear, but I think now, especially in 2022, they are vitally important. And I think it's the best way to describe someone. How do you think up in, until this point, you've kept yourself authentic and attainable? And what is your process like for the next couple of years as you start to grow and travel and, and have more success? How are you planning to keep that? I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 
Um, I think I just never wanted to lie as an artist. I didn't want to like make a song about something I wasn't feeling at the time or a song that wasn't for me or treat people like I wouldn't want to be treated. So I think that's how I um, just move through life. I think becoming a bigger artist and everything's going to take a lot of work, but I think if I just keep, ah, uh, wow, I don't know, maybe what I feel important at the heart of it, I'll keep my authenticity. And then everything I do is for uh, the queer community. It's always been the one thing I always wanted to be a beacon of light and hope. So I think um, if you have something you're striving for and working for, then you'll keep your authenticity. I hope, I hope, I really hope. Yeah. No, I rate, I rate. I, I mean, yeah. I know you for like all of three seconds now, but I can just, I can feel it. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about being a beacon for the queer community and why it's so important. Because I think, you know, I think um, as you curate your social media, you curate the people that you follow, right? And the messages and stuff. And I think for, for, for a big majority of us, I don't think that the queer community is featuring. Um, and, and I say this across the board with, with the, the, the people of, uh, especially women of color, any kind of community that's not mainstream. And I'm seeing this more and more on, on spaces like TikTok and Twitter. Unless you go and look for it, it's not going to find you and you're not going to be exposed to it. And I really, really believe that the only way that we're going to stop the hate and we're going to stop all this nonsense is by consuming um, creators that are not like us, right? That opens conversation. And, I'm, and, and you can disagree. We can all disagree. But there is disagreeing to learn and then there's disagreeing just to disagree. So I want you to talk into maybe why it is important for creators from the queer community to start creating and to start pushing their creations out. And then on the flip side, why we need to be consuming that. Well, I think um, the queer community um, has been, uh, there's so much shame in that idea of the being queer because of obviously years and years and years of um, what has been happening, all the hate crimes still today. Like, it's just, it's very scary to come out, especially as, um, in South Africa, if you come out as a person of color, it's even harder. If you come out as a person of color and a woman, it's like crazy hard. So yeah. um, I think we need to make it more visible. So if, you've, if you're scared of being queer, then that's what is going to happen. You're going to be scared of it forever. And then the people who are against it or um, don't want to see it or don't even want to engage with it, we'll never engage with it because if we're scared, then what does that really say to them? Like they don't have to pay attention to us. So I think if you're queer and you want to make music or if you want to do art or anything, just stand up and do it. I think 80% of it is just standing up. That's the hardest part, I think. Mm. And definitely for people, I think it's for anything, um, queer culture, uh, black culture, everything. You have to step outside of your bubble for anything to be a bigger person to be a better person so you should be challenging yourself every day so you should go and seek it out to understand and learn more about other people otherwise you're just staying in your tiny little bubble and you're never gonna see how beautiful the world is like I feel sorry for people like that I feel Same. sorry Same. yeah everyone's yeah. just screaming into their own little void and I think that it's such a, not yeah. such a nonsense um, I actually saw a, a content creator on TikTok the other day saying that if your For You page is only people that look and sound like you, you are the problem. And I was yeah. like, not wrong, not wrong. My For You page is a mess, but that's okay. So, <laughs> um, so talk to me a little bit about the balance between, between writing um, and, and, and putting your feelings on paper, but then also keeping it light enough that it goes on radio, right? Um, and not erring into the political. How do you find that balance? Um, I'm still struggling. Like some songs I write and then they're for radio just because I, it wasn't about that specific thing. But there are songs in this album that are um, not... Uh, radio for me <laughs> good and good. they say something political so <laughs> you have to like get into the album to hear those songs but I think if you're going to do something political then do it from your point of view don't try and speak for someone else don't try and like change the world um don't be arrogant about it so I think I just come from it from my perspective um don't want to be too like think I'm the bee's knees or anything I can't speak for everyone yeah um 
yeah, I think it's important to do all three, but maybe not for radio. I never do it for radio, for, for like multiple people to listen to it, yeah, for the wider I, audience. I think yeah. every every good album should have at least one controversial song in it. Every, they, they should all. Um, and yeah. we should revisit them every few, every few years. But speaking of the, the the more controversial, not that I'm saying that any of yours are, I'm just using controversial as a word. Speaking yeah. of that, in 2022, with uh, cancel culture and Gen Zs, don't come for me, guys, children. Um, <laughs> I'm an elder millennial, and I'm afraid to say things. I'm not even going to lie to you. How do you say the things that you want to say without yeah. fear of repercussion? Wow, I think oh, cancel culture is there for a reason. It's like a equal and opposite reaction to an action. There's been so like the Me Too movement and like rape culture and gender violence is usually the worst ones that get um, the most, um, people get the most uprisen about it. I think, oh, it's a very good question. Because it's bad things on either side. People have to stand up for what's right, but then sometimes it's too much cancel culture and then someone just gets wiped out. And that's not fair either because there's no space to learn. But also we're canceling everything at this point. Yeah. We're canceling yeah. left, right, and in the, we're just canceling. Yeah. So for me, I think I just speak from my heart and I, um, I definitely don't want to offend anyone with what I say. But if I do offend someone, there's going to be someone who doesn't like it. Um, so I think... I hope I don't get cancelled, but I just err and be honest with myself and I'm never prejudiced or racist or anything like that. I would never do something like that. So I think if you if you think about things from every side and then put it out and make sure that you're consistent in that, I don't think you should should get cancelled at all. I hope not. I'm still scared. I'm still scared. I'm <laughs> Gen Z makes me nervous. They don't like us. They don't like our pot, our hair pots. They don't like our pants. They don't like our yeah. cocktails. They don't like anything about us. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of being hated. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll, I'm get just, over. they'll get over I'm, it. They'll pick someone else soon. Oh, they'll, yeah, no, they'll find someone else. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm just being very dramatic. As you can tell, I'm full of drama. Okay, <laughs> so now to the lighter part of this interview. Um, You have a single, an EP coming out. First, before we talk about the single, um, historically, people write EPs and albums with a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? Kind of tells a story. Have you done yeah. that here, or is it just like a selection of your favorites? Uh, it's definitely a beginning, a story, and an end for me. Okay. For this one. Yeah. For okay, sure. so take us on the journey a little bit of the EP. Like, if we're listening to it from song one to song two, tell us the Amy Lily journey to song, to uh, song end, sorry. Yeah, the first song is what started the whole... Uh, mood of the album and how I was feeling so I kind of wanted it to be like you were getting in a car um, and you start off feeling like really mad and like you're I don't know like you're burning you need to get away and in the middle of the album it's quite like sad and introspective and then the last bit of the album like for me it's you didn't care where you came from you don't care where you're going but you're just driving anyway so it's like a letting go thing so okay. that's for me the whole the whole album for me feels like a car ride I don't know like going off on a road trip by yourself <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna try this. I'm. I live very far yeah, from everything. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna play it from beginning to end, and then I'll I'll give you feedback, and I'll tell you. Like I think I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Not that I have any idea what I'm listening for, because I've never written a song in my life. But I'll I'll <laughs> I'll be judgy for you. <laughs> okay, I would love that. I would love that a lot. Okay, so the first single is video games. Tell me a little bit about this single. Why was this one the one that you wanted to be the first one? I think it was my last EP, I was quite like, I was sad and um, very like heavy and I wanted to just do something a little bit lighter after like being away for quite a long time. Um, so I wanted to just do something light because most of my stuff is sad. So the next song is going to be a sad one. So I thought I should just come back and be a little bit of a different energy to it. Um, and it's like a love letter to my former gay video game nerd self. So I wanted to like spin it and make it a beautiful thing, not something that I hid away from anymore. Yeah, ashamed of. Yeah. But you know what? I think I'm so grateful for human beings like you because I think, and I, you know what? I actually, I, I talk a lot about Gen Z, but I'm very grateful to them for opening up conversations because I too was a not entirely straight video game nerd with different color hair when I was growing up and I wasn't cool and I wasn't popular and I didn't feel like I was, but I feel like there's been this like 
understanding and this this opening of like authenticity and like you like you vulnerability and just saying yeah this is who I am and it can be cool and it and it is cool and you are not other you know you're not different we're all same so yeah. I, I just want to say thank you because I think baby Danny would be super appreciative of you I think uh, I need you I needed me like I needed someone like me when I was going up too so I just want to be that if there's anyone out there that needs this song then I hope they like it <laughs> okay um I think a big question um for anyone who's listening who's struggling with sexuality identity do you have any places that they can go to online um to get like material to like get a helping hand wow um there's the pride shelter in around Zucht in Cape Town which is amazing um but other than that they should just go seek out the like people think like straight people wouldn't just go like talk to other straight people there's like different parts of queer culture like you're a specific type of queer person like um, so if you're into drag or if you're into theater or if you're into video games or then just go find that community and find the queer people in that community. It's not like, that's what I would say, like find out who you are and interact with queer people that are, have similar interests than you and make sure that you're just interacting with your community. Don't hide away. So just go out there. I think. Yeah. Find your people. There's people for all yeah. people. Yeah. There's people for all people. You're not alone. Like get that out of your head. I think that's like the first thing. Yeah. yeah. You're not a beautiful and unique slow, snowflake. No. Yeah. To, quote, to quote one of my favorites, Brad. I know it's actually the Palinchuk man, but it's still Brad for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, Amy, so where do we get it? Um, where do we get the album? Is the EP out yet? Uh, the first single is out, and then it's going to be a second single now happening in June. But you can get okay. it on Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, everywhere. Okay. Yeah, it's on every platform, whatever your vibe is. <laughs> and then touring, um, touring the album, touring, uh, touring the EP, um, visiting Joburg. Yeah, I'm getting ready. I'm in London right now. I'm trying to get a live show together here and work with some cool people. And then I'm definitely going to see if I can do a tour this year with the album when it all comes out so I can do an album tour. That's yes, the dream please. this year. Yeah. Yes, please. We need yeah. it. We need it. All of the live music after the last three years. Exactly. It needs to be happening. I just want to come back and do it like in a special way. So I'm planning that right now. Okay. Amy, yeah. before I say goodbye to you, um, for your fans that are listening, for maybe your fans that might be struggling, um, do you have a message of love, compassion, authenticity for them? Uh, for me, what I've been doing, because I'm also feeling a bit overwhelmed these days, is I would say look at the stair, not the staircase. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm borrowing this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It helps me all the time. So that's what helps me. I don't know if that helps anyone out there. If you're feeling yours, the same way. Yours is so much lighter than mine. Mine is always its darkest <laughs> before the dawn. I, like yours is so much better because mine is already like dark, like, <laughs> like foreboding. And yours is like, no, no, it's fine. One step at a time. Baby steps, girl. Baby steps. Just baby <laughs> steps. If you're struggling, just baby steps is one good thing per day. Just one good thing. Try and find one good thing. And journal. You heard Amy at the beginning of this. Journal. Journal. Please journal. Yeah. In any way. I'll try. I'll let you know how yeah. it goes. <laughs> Even like a blog. Like talk to yourself. Like a blog diary is good. No. You know what? No. no. I'm so narcissistic. It would never work. I'm going to be worried okay. about my hair <laughs> and like my, my makeup. <laughs> no, we'll write. Okay. We're going to write. Amy. Become a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, at yeah. least we're getting it out, right? Thank you for this therapy yeah. session. You can send me an invoice later. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> Amy, thank you. This has been a really lovely interview. Please go and download um, video games. It is everywhere. Like Amy said, go follow her. And hopefully we'll see you in Joburg soon, soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Jacaranda FM.